Jeff Berwick runs the Dollar Vigilante, a economic and political and financial newsletter. When Monero was a mere few pennies, he recommended to his subscribers that they go and buy some Monero. Monero currently at time of recording is $152. The Dollar Vigilante recommended Monero because of its supreme privacy features. However, a few months ago, they recommended another privacy coin to its subscribers, and that privacy coin is a few pennies. And this video is a in-depth discussion about privacy and that privacy coin. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. The Dollar Vigilante also recommended Bitcoin to its subscribers when they think Bitcoin was a few dollars. And they also recommended Ethereum to its subscribers when Ethereum was also at the beginning of its history and was very, very cheap. A couple of years ago, the Dollar Vigilante launched the Crypto Vigilante just to focus on cryptocurrencies. Now, the Crypto Vigilante is headed up by Rafael Laverde. He also has a YouTube channel. I shall have the links to that and the Dollar Vigilante and the Crypto Vigilante in the description below. I am a subscriber to the Dollar Vigilante. I find it very, very useful. And you might want to take a look for yourself about subscribing to that service. This video is an interview that I did with Raphael with Lutz. Now, Lutz is one of the team at Pirate Chain, and I am one of the team at Pirate Chain. And this is an in depth discussion in what Pirate Chain is, the importance of privacy, and what makes Pirate Chain so distinct and special, so much so that the Dollar Vigilante and the Crypto Vigilante have recommended this privacy coin for its subscribers. Now, this video was recorded a few days ago. It's already appeared on Crypto Vigilante's channel, and I am with his, his permission reproducing it on my channels. I'm also involved with Pirate Chain. It is a decentralized proof of work coin with a decentralized community organization. Any questions or comments, put them in the description below. Please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Crypto Rich YT, join my official Telegram announcements channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, come over to BitTube because of YouTube censorship. You can also find me on BitChute and on Library. What up, Vigilantes? Today, I have the pleasure of having two very important guests on the show. And they're important, not because maybe you've heard of them, but because of what's going on in crypto that really takes me back to the old days. And for that reason, I wore a very special shirt that has a story. This was a shirt from a conference in, in, uh, in Russia that was that occurred during a time where bitcoin was not allowed in russia so don't ask me how i got this shirt but let's just say that the dream of going to the moon with crypto not by any bs and so at the time a bitcoin was thought to be private enough and as you guys may know by now bitcoin unfortunately has shown itself not to be as private as we once thought it to be. After the development of blockchain analytics, we have come to realize that Bitcoin is not private at all. And at the Crypto Vigilante, unfortunately, we're, we're forced to call it a surveillance coin because it's a transparent blockchain. And as memetically indicative of this shirt, you can see that the, uh, the Patrushkas or whatever you call these little Russian dolls, right? They were a symbol of the encryption and the privacy, right, within Bitcoin that no longer really exists. It's not, it's, we can't call Bitcoin a privacy coin. So today, I want to introduce you guys to a, a project that's pretty new. And it's a project that it's still a baby project. As you guys know, we love Monero, but <laughs> there's, a new, uh, there's a new crypto on the block. And it's a it's a it's a baby coin, and it takes a lot for us ever to to back a coin at the crypto vigilante, or to actually you know say it is a good coin, because it takes for us a long time to do fundamental analysis and very you know a lot of thorough research. Uh, it took us over a year of research and of really understanding the community, the technology, the crypto economics, and everything regarding this coin, to the point that we were like, wow, this is truly a gem. So today we have the pleasure of having crypto rich. And Pirate Lutz, the legendary Lutz, here with us to talk about Pirate Chain. Because there's a lot of noise in cryptocurrency. And unfortunately, 
whenever there's a good project that comes out, ironically, it doesn't get the attention that it deserves. And so it, it's almost a moral imperative to talk about things that matter because that cypherpunk dream has never died and that's why we're here. And Mr. Rich, welcome to the show. Pirate hey. Lutz, welcome. How are you guys doing today? We're doing very Great. Well. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you so much, Raphael. Thank you. Um, so just, maybe you guys can introduce yourselves real quick. Tell people what you guys are about and how people can find more about you guys. Okay, Lutz, you want to go first? Hey, uh, I could. Okay. Sure. Hey, so my name is Lutz. Uh, I'm not anonymous. I also go by the name Angelo, which is my social security name. And uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a really big an anarchist. I don't, I don't like rules. I don't like any rules. People tell me what to do. I don't do it. Uh, if so, you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to try to do it. Uh, so, you know, grow, uh, you know, I was, I was a corporate slave, just like most people at some point in time. I worked for a Fortune 30 company called Amerisource Bergen, and I was a network engineer over there. And I was a good little slave for a very long time. And then at some point, I almost died. Uh, I woke up in the hospital. And I went back to work eventually when I recovered, but things were never the same after that. Uh, after that, I, I wondered why I keep working. Uh, why do you keep working just to, just to pay the bills and just to go back to work again the next day? Uh, I worked 12 hours a day. I was very tired of it. At some point I got sick. Uh, I also found myself on the street and then, uh, I was living out my car for a while and, uh, then I found Bitcoin. And I was investing even at little amounts at that point in time or whatever I can. I ended up moving in my mom's basement, probably like most people in America. And, uh, and then I started, I got, I got a, a better job. And then uh, I started mining my ass off. And, uh, and here I am today. I, you know, I'm doing pretty well. And uh, I, want, I have a son. I am married now, which I never thought would be a possibility for me. Uh, ne I, I never even seen it, you know, so, you know, money, money does, you know, when they say it's life changing money, it really is life changing money, it changed, changed my life. I I saw possibilities that were not there. So, uh, you know, now I have a one year old son and I want to change the world for him. I don't want him to live in enslavement like I did. I don't want people stealing his goddamn money anymore. Uh, you know, I, I used to look at those paychecks, you know, and they, you know, but 900 bucks. And, and they were really 1300 but for some reason, there was this insane amount of money they were taking from me. Social Security, state tax, federal tax, 401k, which is, you know, useless. Uh, it, I, I got sick of it. I was like, I don't want to pay anything anymore. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's how my, my road to anarchy, I guess, started. I was really sick of it. I, I was tired of not making enough money to live. And, uh, you know, and I don't want them stealing his money. I want him to live free. I don't want anybody ever telling my son what to do, except for me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's it. I, I, that, that's, that's, that's me in a nutshell. But great having now I work great for, to have you. Thank you for being and here. I, and now I work for Pirate. I work there awesome. voluntarily. I love it because I, I believe it's the best, the best freedom tool we have to, to, to get free again, to, to break us away from these banks. I mean, I, 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 I use local Monero. Uh, a month ago, and I was doing pretty good, you know, with the twenty percent margins and stuff. And you know, I was doing the trading. And then all of a sudden, they canceled my Zelly, and I, and I go like this: I, This is the reason why I st I stopped using banks six years ago. I have no bank account. I I, I use my wife's. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> and and uh, I have no bank accounts. I have no credit cards. I have nothing. I, I've given it all up. Uh, so uh, then 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 they they uh, denied my my Zelly account. They told me. Uh, it's only supposed to be used. And, and you know, it's, and I, I, I went off on them. I said, listen, I was like, you have my money and you're telling me what to do with it. Now I remember why I don't like banks and I'm never going to use it again. I, I, I was totally done. I, I'm, I, 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 hate, I hate the system. It needs to be to torn down and it needs to be rebuilt because right? it's broken. Right? 100%. Who gives, right to, who gives you the right to tell, tell me what to do with my money? I, you, I put my money in, in your bank account. You should be thanking me. Now, you don't tell me what to do with, I, with my money, right? And that's the problem here. And, you know, what's interesting is, is that Zelle really came out after Bitcoin, right? Like the bank saw what was happening with crypto. And um, 
And now, you know, they, they had to kind of compete. And I think that was part of their attempt of competing with crypto. You call it Zelly. Some people call it Zell. Some people call it QuickPay. But it's all BS. Um, and now we have PayPal, which is uh, another kind of quasi attempt of the banks and the financial legacy institutions to, to bastardize cryptocurrency. But we can talk about that later. But thank you for being here with us today, Lutz. Really appreciate having you. Awesome, man. I, I, love, I, I love talking to people with the same mindset as I am. I know a lot of people would say I'm crazy. I think everybody else is crazy. <laughs> Thanks, Lutz. Shall I go, Rafael? Go for it. Okay, so uh, I run a channel on YouTube, um, but since YouTube shadow banned me, about a year ago, deleted 160 of my videos. I get a quarter of the views I used to get before. I have also, uh, I upload on BitTube, which is like my preferred primary channel, which is censorship resistant, moving over onto the PeerTube protocol, which is fully decentralized, also on Library and BitChute, and it's all under the name Crypto Rich. And I started um, posting in April 2017, so a few months before the bull run of 2017. My background, Raphael, is in child protection social work. So I used, oh, to wow. push, I used to be a social worker and I used to do the really, really rough end, you know, where it was, I, that's what I preferred, where it was so severe. I had to go in, you know, get court orders to remove children because the parents weren't going to do what those wow. children needed. They weren't going to provide it, right? It's an ultimate last resort. Really, really enjoyed it. Couldn't abide by the paperwork, the ridiculous amount of paperwork. So I was, for years and years and years, I was looking for a way out. Uh, I don't live in London. I live outside London. I used to go to London, sleep on cousins' floors Monday to Friday so I could earn enough um, because we are a single-income family because my two kids have never been to school. They're home-educated. Um, home Good for you. That's awesome. Homeschooling Great. in American. <laughs> right. And um, so it's kind of funny because on, on the one side, I'm like this, I have this background as an agent of the state, a soft police officer. As a social worker, right? But what I did was, uh, it just needed to be done. Just needed to be done. You know, the, the the sort of children and the dysfunctional families that I was working with. I don't know any other way. Uh, and on the other side, uh, my children have been unschooled. One's sixteen, the other's thirteen. And I discovered Bitcoin in twenty thirteen, like late twenty twelve. Made my first purchase in twenty thirteen. Started running the channel, and it's been my ticket out of social work because I don't have a pension, because I did contract work, because government workers, you know, they don't get a lot of money. Uh, so I got more money as a contract worker. I don't have a pension. So crypto is my ticket for financial security. Um, and I, the, I think for me, I think it's a paradox that while I had this role, which is incredibly intrusive, you know, the rights and the powers that I have or had as a social worker to go into people's houses. The flip side of that is uh, I am all for privacy, all for privacy. You cannot, cannot have freedom without privacy. Um, the law with regards to home education in Britain is very, very liberal. In England, it's very, very liberal. I don't have to tell the government anything. They don't need to know. I don't have to register them anywhere. There are no checks or anything that are mandatory. They don't have to follow any curriculum or do any exams unless they want to. So the local authority, the local council, they know about one of my kids, uh, which was by accident when he had to go to hospital for something and the hospital told the education department, they don't know about my other kid. And quite right too, I don't want them intruding into my life. So um, that's where I am. I got involved with Pirate Chain via Komodo. I'd been covering Komodo. I think Komodo is just a fabulous, fabulous project. And I heard about these um, Komodo devs who one day they were tinkering with, with the code. Like I imagine, um, people would tinker with a car. You know, they'd get bits of a car together and move it about and rebuild it. They were doing the equivalent with code, wondering, is it possible to create a currency where every single peer-to-peer -peer transaction is invisible using ZK snarks, which I understand to be far superior than ring signatures. And so I got invited to start covering Pirate Chain uh, right at the beginning, I think, about a month or so after it, um, they released the code and started mining. And ever since then, I've been regularly involved and regularly co covering it. I, th I think it's great. No privacy, no freedom. If I don't have the freedom 
to withdraw myself from the public sphere, then I'm not free. I'm just in a panopticon. So Amen. That's, that's me, Raphael. That's what I've got to say. Thank you for being here, Crypto Rich. And I'm honored to have both of you guys here. So, like, if you're watching this right now, I think you guys just heard two stories of two individuals in the market that, um, you know, it, they, they, they express who they are. And I want you guys to take, take this. When we're in crypto, we know that the world is at the jaws of tyranny and that this is do or die. And you're seeing two gentlemen here telling you that they have, they are completely committed into cryptocurrency. This is the type of cryptocurrency enthusiast, cryptocurrency adopter that the vast majority of early adopters and people that are coming out of the uh, legacy tyrannical financial system, this is what they're finding. They're finding freedom. And so it's important to draw, I want to draw emphasis on that because right now in cryptocurrency, we're seeing something legendary, which is that it's a manifestation of what is to come. And, and I'm going to do a video of this on this in the future, um, which will, will be titled the Nakamoto Consensus Part 2 Explained. And we're seeing the Bitcoin Cash blockchain being defended by its miners to the end. And there's a hash war happening right now. They're destroying an enemy that they saw trying to sabotage their blockchain from within. And so the way that these gentlemen here, what they represent, they represent that enthusiasm. And in the future, we're going to be seeing, you know, a lot of a lot of effort to protect and to save and to carry on these precious blockchains. Right. These 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 things are they these these blockchains are precious and people will will be, will be defending them to the end. Right. And and we're seeing a manifestation of that right now. And it's beautiful. So thank you guys for sharing that. I just wanted to throw that out there because it's it's a it's a lived example of, of someone of a group of people that saw their blockchain be attacked. And right now, if you look it up on on, on Twitter, for example, it's volunteerism.dev. He and his friends are protecting the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, and they're not just protecting it. They're tearing the competition up. So they're making them run, and they're chasing after them and destroying them. It's beautiful to watch. So unfortunately, Bitcoin Cash is not as private as we would want to be, but Pirate Chain definitely is. So people right now watching this are asking themselves, well, what is Pirate Chain? What is this cryptocurrency? You mentioned ZK Snarks. Um, ZK Snarks is based on uh, – it's a, uh, it's a – uh, on zero knowledge proof. So maybe if you guys can explain what that is, what, what type of technology this is, and why is ZK Snarks is different than something like Monero. Okay, Luis, well, ZK, ZK, ZK Snarks, uh, I, I'm not that technical, but I can tell you that uh, it is the latest in the cryptographic algorithms. Uh, you could you could uh, you could show something to somebody and and they would never know who you are using this crypto this cryptography and we shouldn't really get too technical so this this is you know the way it should be monero has has a shuffling system so our ours is totally uh it gets cut off totally there, there's no possible way to uh to figure out who's on the other end of the line let's say you're on a telephone but if you're on a telephone with monero uh your call is just being shuffled between 12 other telephones and at some point in time maybe when computers get better uh, that'll be that'll be figured out, uh, and you know what? When quantum computers uh, come into play, that could you know even zk snarks could probably be be figured out to be honest. Uh, but I don't see that happening for at least ten twenty years, uh, even though people say there's com quantum computers out there. Uh, so so th so think of think of uh, think of it like this: Monero is shuffling and doing the the shuffle, right? Which means that something could be unshuffled, right? And then with pirate. When you send something, it goes into the abyss. There's no way you, someone's going to find that. Unless you give them what's called a viewing key, which Monero has as well, uh, which allows you to do business with people. So so if uh, if I'm doing business between me and you, and it's nobody else's goddamn business who you do business with, right? Uh, just me and you, we do good business together for hundreds of years after that. Uh, you give I give you a viewing key. And there's your receipt. You'd be able to track the transactions only if I give you consent using a long key algorithm that's generated in the wallet. Uh, other than that, if I don't if I don't give that to you, there is no block explorer that could tell you the business that we're doing. Uh, there, there's no way to trace it, and, and that's why I love I love it, and I love the fungibility of Pirate on top of it. But you know, that's a different that's a different topic. Yeah, I love that optional disclosure that you just uh, spoke about with the view key. Um, 
So, uh, Crypto Rich, would you like to add to anything? That yeah, if said? I can u- use a metaphor. So, supposing you and I are going to do a transaction, Raphael. How it works with ZK Snarks is I don't know your identity and you don't know my identity. But let's say I've got, I've got a list, this box and it's got a certain amount of coins in. And nobody can see what's inside this box. And, I, and it's similar with you. Nobody can see what's inside your box and where it is or the address of it. However, you and I... You and I can agree to communicate over the uh, pirate chain protocol such that we're both satisfied. And this is the details of the tech that I can't explain, such that we're both satisfied that the transaction is real and valid and it goes across. And then like with Bitcoin, when it goes from one wallet to another wallet, everybody, everybody can see that. But it went from this wallet, it was 20 Bitcoin to that one. How it works with pirate chain is and, and I, I you know anybody watching this go check out the pirate chain explorer once the coins have been mined and are in the first wallet after that nothing there is nothing on the blockchain it goes into the first wallet and that's for auditing purposes from the miner so you know that the miners aren't rigging the system by mining lots and lots of extra coins right so it goes in and then after that you don't know how many's in the wallet you don't know how many have gone out where they've gone out how often, what time, nothing, no data. It's like the abyss, like, like, like Luke said, right? So when you and I transact, you and I know the transaction is happening. You know, it's, it's the, the blockchain equivalent of you and I meet, and meet somewhere. I give you $20. Nobody else, there's no one witness to that. Nobody else knows it happened. It's just between you and I. So that's the level of, of um, privacy that PyChain offers. And what happens with Monero, my understanding is, it goes from the address from this box, and then and then it fabricates all these other addresses. Uh, Luke said twelve. I don't know exactly how many, right? But it fabricates that it goes different parts of it go through these different twelve addresses. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. But that can all eventually be tracked because this to do with the anonymity set of both. So if you have ten transactions and nine of them are anonymous, or you just have ten transactions every day. Say with Monero, every day, 10 transactions, you can over time work out the source, which ones go where and where the addresses are and everything, right? With data analysis, it is theoretically possible. Easier with optional privacy coins like Dash and Zcash. With Pirate Chain, the anonymity set is a thousand or a million. It's it's infinite. You can't work it out. I'll go with you, Lutz. Yeah, it's it's infinite. So, so, so. Monero is, has a static an anonym, anonymity uh, set, right? And uh, with Pirate, every single time a transaction is done, it, it increases. And and go looking at the future, and this is why I love Pirate, is because it has an ever increasing anonymity set. At the moment, I think we're on we're at three hundred thousand, and and Monero is at fifty thousand on the anonymity set. You could go to Dex wow. stats. Wow, yeah, that's uh, beautiful. Thank uh, you. I did not know this. This was gr- this is great. Wow. I'll, I'll give you the link. So it's a non set dot dex stats d e x stats s t a t s dot info. So it's live. You can see the anonymity set live there. And I love watching it go up. I, like, last month it was two fifties with all the transactions going on right now with the you know the trading. Uh, it's at three hundred and twelve. Uh, uh, yep, three hundred. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's at two twenty one right now. It, it got a little lower, but you can see it live. It's pretty cool. Um, that's still way more than Monero has ever had. And, uh, and think about this, and this is where I'm going with the future. Uh, when DEXs, when real pure DEXs, not these half-assed DEXs, I call them H-DEXs, right? Half-assed DEXs. Uh, because they, what, because there's a lot of different components to a DEX. You got your order books, you got your gateway, you got your matcher, right? There's a lot of components to a DEX. So when people say I got a DEX, it don't mean it's a DEX, right? They, they, most of the time it's, it's some type of, uh, token proxy. You know, uh, we'll use our token in place of, you know, yours. And that's what's traded on the DEX. Now, that, that's not a real DEX. It's not a, it's not a true DEX. Uh, a true DEX is I send it to you and it sends it back. It's pure. It, it, there's, there is no token in the middle doing the work. So, so uh, think about this in the future when true DEXs and atomic DEX is a true DEX. Uh, sure, surely technology is a true DEX, but it's all, it's all GUI. It's not, it doesn't have a GUI. It's all like command line. So it's not easy. To, to use right now, but it will be one day. Uh, Pirate Dex will be a fork of Shirley, by the way. And uh, 
once there's actual trading going on and they're real, they're real trades. Because at the moment, the only thing that counts on these sexes, the centralized exchanges, is the deposits and withdrawals in and out of the exchange. That's all that that the, the actual blockchain sees. The trading isn't on chain, right? But with a real dex, all the trades are on chain. Every trade that's done is on chain. So what happens to pirates and anonymity set is if all those ex- all those trades on a real dex starts happening, we're going. It's 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 going to be ever increasing. The more trades that happen, it'll be on chain, and the on on set will consistently go up and up and up because now all the trades are being done on chain. Does that make sense? Oh, that's incredible! Yeah, and I mean, just recently Monero uh, raised money. Within in three days, they were fully funded to be able to have atomic swaps between well to start the development of atomic swaps between BTC and Monero. So we expect a lot of liquidity coming into uh, privacy coins. And now privacy coins, guys. Let's uh, let me just say this for those of you watching: it's not just about privacy, guys. It, fungibility, which is the property of money that allows one unit of account to be interchangeable for every other unit of account, is what gives a currency utility. The moment that you take away fungibility, which is a, 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 it's a, it's a fundamental pro- a property of money, if you take away fungibility from a currency, it no longer it loses its utility as currency. And this is very important. So, a ten dollar bill is always a ten dollar bill, right? A one ounce of gold is always a one a one ounce of gold. No one ever, no no one ever. Um, imagine if you were to pay with a ten dollar bill. At the store and someone were to tell you hey i can't receive that ten dollar bill from you because somewhere down the line someone else used it for something that was illicit in some jurisdiction not you but someone 50 transactions ago that you have nothing to know do with did something with this ten this ten dollar bill we can't receive your money so lack of fungibility is something extremely horrible for a currency, and that's and that's what we're finding in the vast majority of cryptocurrencies. So the cri- for future of cryptocurrencies are privacy coins, which in for the crypto vigilante team, that they are true cryptocurrencies. We're starting to call and, these other currencies surveillance coins because they properly are. If you are a and, money manager, hedge fund manager that has your you have your secret sauce and you have your portfolio, you do not want any financial voyeurist to come in and see wh- how you allocate the res- the funds of, of the portfolio that you manage. Well, with a coin like Bitcoin or Ethereum, which are transparent blockchains, anyone in the world can see how you allocate your resources and, and allocate your funds. So fungibility is extremely important for the future of cryptocurrencies. And um, I just wanted to say that so that everyone understands that this is not just something about privacy and freedom, which is the first and foremost reason why we need good money. But it's also because without fungibility, we don't have usefulness in the cryptocurrency. Can I can I jump in real quick? So go for so, it. I'm done. <laughs> so so any anybody that knows anybody that I, I mean I, that's a libertarian or follows Ron Paul, uh, you know, gold is money, right? Gold is money. Right. So when Ben Bernanke said that gold is not money, everybody was all crazy. Right. All the round pullers, uh, because gold is the real money. Uh, wh- what you could do with gold and fungi- this is just to explain fungibility a little bit to you. Uh, you pay me in gold in a gold nugget for a service or whatnot. And I take your gold. All right. So even if what you gave me, uh, what we traded for was illicit, it was it was against the law. Right. Uh, it wouldn't matter. Because I could, I can melt that gold down and make it look like something else, and go pay for it, use it as payment somewhere else, and nobody would ever know where that gold came from and how it was used. And that's fungibility. Pirate, you will, ne- you could get, you could get pirate all day long, and nobody could trace it, and nobody could tell you what it was ever used for. And why I got into Bitcoin in the beginning was because I thought it was untraceable. I thought this was the money that that everybody, you know, I that I could mind my own business with. Right. And they everybody can mind their own business. with You can't you don't know what I got. And that's that's the whole point. The reason why I got in it. You don't need to know what I got. Right. Do I know you? I don't know you. Right. So it, ever since then, I, I, I don't even look at politics. People say, oh, I'm a libertarian. I'm a, I, I don't care. Like, don't put a title on my head. I dare you put a title on my head. All right. Don't ever do that. All right. So. So, you know, just 
Money is money, right? Something of value. I give you something you like. You give me something I like. We we do good business. That's the only thing that matters. Honestly, I, I think we should go back to sheriffs and bounties. Uh, just one sheriff in town and make the whole community uh, the bounty hunters, right? So if there's a bad person in, in, in out there, you know, and he, he doesn't, I mean, he, he, he doesn't, I'm talking about real bad people, like like people that murder other people for no reason and crazies, right? You got the whole community, you've given everybody a job. You know how many people out there with guns come in and be like, yo, I got this jackass over here. And uh, yeah, I, I heard he killed a couple people. And, and that's it. And you throw him in jail. Instead of paying all these officers out there to do, I don't know, eat donuts. I don't know what they do, honestly. And they, they do even- nothing. <laughs> they do nothing. They do nothing. Look, man, I, especially in, in any big city, they do nothing. Like in so many cities in the world, if you lose your car, you're, you're better off calling the cab company and putting a bounty as to, to, for the cabbies to go around the city and, hey, I found your car. Yep. No, it's 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 ridiculous. It's fact, I mean, we can talk about this for days, but no, they, I, I, am I, I'm mind boggled. I was just talking about this before the show. I'm mind boggled with how inefficient law enforcement is. But whatever, that's another topic. But <laughs> right, <laughs> sorry, sorry. The, the, sorry, no, no, no. There's some there's something that um I think is in the background um that I can bring it back to pirate chain because you know, looks when you were talking about. Um, going back to sheriffs and um, bounty hunters and stuff, right? You're talking about decentralization. People making choices and determining their livelihoods and having agency at the grassroots level. And Pirate Chain allows for that because it can't be controlled and managed by outside agencies. You know, even if regulators and governments, they shut down sexes and they tell the Sex is not, you can't have um, privacy cryptocurrencies. Well, no problem because we got DEXs now. And it's that spirit is also there within the organization of Pirate Chain. There's no company behind it. There's no organization. You know, Lutz and I, we're volunteers. We, we are involved because for us, it's a labor of love. And that's the case with everybody. So it, it's a, when it launched oh, just over two years ago, um, no pre mind no development fund, no uh, fund for the for the team. It was just they released the algorithm. People started mining it. People got involved who wanted to be involved. And then people get involved at whatever level that they want to be involved at. Bravo, bravo. That's spontaneous order right there. That's beautiful. Wow. It's yeah, like, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's this organizing. Is like, and and, this, and, and, it's, and it, you're, I'm so happy you brought her around because, look, they are taking that away from Bitcoin. The ability to have that grassroots, bottom up, uh, like organizing of the people. I mean, the, the Bitcoin blockchain itself, with all of its faults in it being completely transparent now, it still allows you, if you use it, pro- if people were to use it properly, it would still allow people to organize from the bottom up. Uh, in, the, in the whole Bitcoin debate, I'm a big blocker, right? So I have my own, exp- I have my own opinions, right? But, uh, but the, not, I mean, the TCV team, we all have different opinions regarding this topic, but they're taking away people's agency even within crypt, within Bitcoin. So like now, they, now we have PayPal coming in and they are pretending to be selling people Bitcoin when they're not. So even if this gets kick me, kick, gets this channel kicked out of YouTube, I don't care. PayPal Bitcoin is not Bitcoin. If you don't own your Bitcoin... It's not Bitcoin. If you don't hold the private keys, it's not your Bitcoin. It's not your Bitcoin. So if you are in, getting into cryptocurrency and you're excited because PayPal is finally, like, you know, well, for the second time, actually, you know, taking in cryptocurrency, then see it as a cool sign, but don't use PayPal for cryptocurrency. Control your private keys and then you will have possession of your cryptocurrency. But yeah. Rafael, can, I, can I just say that for those that don't understand, if you're kind of new to to crypto, what Raphael is saying is if you buy PayPal, if you buy Bitcoin through PayPal, you cannot take the Bitcoin outside the PayPal system. It stay, it's closed, which is completely Pay- antithetical to the whole spirit of Bitcoin and blockchain. It, it, you know, for all we know, all they're going to do is print lots and lots of extra Bitcoin, fake Bitcoin inside the PayPal closed system, and people are going to think it's real Bitcoin. Proxy Bitcoins, proxy tokens. 
Simulation Bitcoin, as I like to call it. Fiat Bitcoin. <laughs> Fiat coin. That's what it is. That's, what so it that's is. the difference. That's what it is. Yeah. I wonder so, how they can be held accountable for all the coins they say they have. Well, they're they're, probably, they're like banks, right? They're supposed to have a, a certain amount. They're supposed to have in reserve what they get, what they sell their clients, what they give their clients. They're supposed to have that actual crypto in reserve. The bank, it's like the bank, you know, like you're dealing with fiat 2.0. That's not, you, if you, if you want to use crypto, you have to manage your own private keys and there are amazing wallets out there. We really like Exodus for anyone that's getting started. Exodus.io. We think it's an incredible wallet. Mm -hmm. Just download Exodus.io. Shout out to the Exodus team. You guys rock. And just then you control your private keys. And, and then you actually hold your cryptocurrency and you're actually interacting with the blockchains directly, as you're supposed to. I contacted Exodus uh, for Pirate. Uh, so in order for us to get on Exodus, we have to be on one of their partner, uh, on one of their partner exchanges, not really an exchange, they're like Changely, you know, where you send it and it sends you a different coin. Uh, we need to be on one of those, like Changely or uh, Change Hero, or there's a couple of them they sent me. So I applied to all of them. Yeah, there's a few of them. I, like yeah. that. I, so I applied to all of them. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear back. Uh, one of them, uh, Change Hero, replied back. And in, in order to get with them, you got to be part of their par partners. So I'm kind of seeing a, a pattern here. I got to be every, everyone's. I mean, so now, now I got to go out to their partners, and and uh, you know, which is KuCoin, one of those exchanges, in order for me to be on uh, uh, Change. Or what is it? Uh, change Hero or something like that. I don't even remember the names. And then, and then in order for, and, and then, uh, and then once I get on there, then we could be on Exodus. So yeah, it, look, so, so anyone out there that's into cryptocurrency and there's a lot of people that came in with money and they think that they're going to duplicate and recreate the same bankster ca cartel. No, it's not going to happen. We're not going to let it happen because the free market, the people are the ones that run this. Not you, not you guys. You guys are done. You guys are done. You guys are dinosaurs. You guys are on your way out. Because the moment you try to make it difficult for entrepreneurs, the free market will always find a way. And right now, we're talking about DEXs. Like you just mentioned, you gave a couple of examples that are gonna about to start coming into, mar into the market with atomic swaps. And once that happens, if you guys keep being difficult with innovation, you guys are going to be gone. No one's going to use you. And that's all there is to it. So if Exodus doesn't step up their game, guess what? Someone else is going to come and, and take your lunch. That's just how it is. So, yeah. Rafael, ju just on that, there are three DEXs, and Lutz can correct me, that where Pirate Chain is available. 